He's too yeah. young to be the Peter Weller Batman. This guy should have known where they were going. I told him that. I was like, didn't you know that? Mm -hmm. I mean, they talked about this for a good while. Mm -hmm. And Ben Affleck was probably the best needle in this shit haystack of a movie. Yeah. Well, I, just, I, I knew since I seen him in Hollywood Land that, and even from Daredevil, I don't think a, a lot of that was his fault. And like what happened with reception of, of Daredevil. Um, but like, like just from Hollywood land, it's just from seeing him in that, I was so, I was so impressed. I was like, yeah, I gave him a superhero movie. So when they said, okay, Ben Affleck was cast, I was, I was happy because I seen that side of him in other movies that I could relate to. I could say, okay, you know, he made a good Superman. Uh, he was a decent Daredevil. I really think he, I thought he did a pretty stand-up job. So I would I would love to see him as Batman. Yeah, I'm, I'm more interested in his story, and <laughs> I haven't heard critics complain about him. No. So, and that's and that's another thing too, because this me and guy, this guy was me and him was going back and forth, and I'm like, well. You know, explain to me why is it hated so much. Explain to me, give me reasons, give me something. Mm -hmm. You know, then just because this guy was like, oh, I can't distinct fan bases and so on and so forth. You know, it's about the DC fandom. You know, they hated this movie. They hated this movie. Audiences hated this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, as much as I hate it, you still have to admit there's people out there that like it. There's people out there that will like it no matter what I say, and that's fine. Yeah. I keep saying that because, you know, I don't want to be here and just bash people who like it. I'm not. That's not who I am. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, for the the broody Batman side of it too, I thought he was great. Because you go back and watch like those movies I was saying before, like especially Hollywood Land. You go back and watch that movie. He plays Superman in the movie. That's a good movie, too. Yeah, when he's playing his regular self, it comes off very Bruce Wayne. Like, when you're watching him, you think, oh, man, he would make a great Bruce Wayne because, you know, he's so, like, nonchalant, and he's, like, the rich guy, and he's, like, waving money around, and, and you know, he's got his girls on the side and cars and everything, so you can kind of see it there already. Kind of, you can kind of see that Bruce Wayne side of it already back then. <laughs> um, but in this one, definitely way more broody. I, I, I guess, you know, he would have to be for the circumstances. But uh, I don't think he would have stopped trying to kill Superman. I think he would have killed him. If, uh... Even if Lois would have said that, I think he would have still killed him. Well, let me ask something. Like... You know, kind of talking about this movie. Where do you see this movie in like five years? Is this one of these movies that is just gonna come back? Well, I, I'm not saying like it's gonna be uh, the Dark Knight or something, but um, for one, I don't see it on my DVD shelf. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned. You know, I'll be I damned. Be there. <clears throat> I'll be damned. Um. But it's like, you know, in regards to the audiences and the reactions and such, like, where does this movie, where do you place this movie in the next five to seven, maybe ten years? I see it as a warning sign in five to ten years. Because um, if they haven't changed their way in five to ten years, I, I think they shouldn't be allowed to make movies. Because <laughs> yeah. they're really disrespecting the people who they made their money off of. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, I give you a whole bunch of movie, uh, hold, bleh. it's like I give you a whole bunch of money to draw me a picture in, I don't know, 50 years from now. And like, I, you know, I pay for your kids to go to college and everything like that. And I say, okay, in 50 years, I want a picture of a stick man just a regular stick man. And 50 years from then, 
you just give me, uh, you know, like, you sneeze onto the paper, <laughs> and send it back, and take the money and say, okay, here's the masterpiece. It's kind of like that. Yeah. And I feel like we're the people who've been paying for the stick man and uh, just getting snot in return. Yeah, it's like... Well, I don't want to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, you ask a crazy person to paint out a Picasso and you're just, he's just going to slap paint on the canvas. Yeah. I mean, it's just... He's just going to throw paint... Yeah. And throw paint, and but I know it is just opinion. Um, and that leads yeah. me to Ghostbusters. What's that, that? That leads me to Ghostbusters. Go ahead. Because I'm still <laughs> mad about Ghostbusters. I don't know why, but I just it's just been on my mind. And today I was like I was doing the editing today, and I was listening to the 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 first one we did from last month, and and uh, the Ghostbusters thing came up, and then I was like, shit, damn, I'm still. I'm still on that because we have Ghostbusters 1 and then we have Ghostbusters 2 and then we have Ghostbusters the video game and Ghostbusters 3 was going to play off of the video game. The Dan Aykroyd script kind of... You can, you can see uh, in the video game where it nods to Dan Aykroyd's idea for the third movie. And then, you know like when you were saying in it, you were reading that Bill Murray quote about him saying nobody wants to to watch, you know, fat guys run around anymore. Yeah. You know, then why did he do the video game? Well, that was after. That was all the talks about yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters 3. Yeah, yeah, but like, he did the game before that, and they kind of knew where they were going with it. Because I'm sure, I'm sure, come on, I'm sure Dan Aykroyd was there saying, okay, this fits into here, and it fits into there. Dan Aykroyd pretty pretty uh, constructed artist, you know. When you look at when you look at like the original Ghostbusters, how much construction and I'm not just saying construction like sets or anything like that. When you when you get down to the the levels of of hidden agenda that are in that movie, and I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, I mean like um just all the hidden gags and and the talent and the little things that are in there that you don't see, like Tower of Babel. No one makes that analogy that um, Dana's building is the Tower of Babel from the Bible, but it's in there. You get a little bit of it in the uh, when they're in prison. You know when they're yeah. looking at the map. Yeah. You get a little bit of it in there, but uh, all these different things that are in there. Uh, that are in history. And it's funny because, you know, we grew up watching these movies and we learn about them from these movies, but it's almost in our subconscious. Like, we don't really know what it is, but it's in our subconscious. All these, like, little levels of, of things that he constructed into that, into those, both of those films were amazing. So I can't see him saying, okay, Bill, you know, just read the script. I, I would almost assume there was so much time and you could tell that he was talking to Bill from what he was saying in interviews, so... Oh, he's reached out to him for a number of years about... What are, you, what are we talking about, third film? Yeah. Uh, I mean... It's kind of like the whole thing, too. Like, as much as he's approached Bill Murray, and Bill Murray... We always we believe that he reconciled with Howard Ramis and their beef with on Groundhog Day and okay. Uh, I don't know if you heard of that too. I didn't hear about the Groundhog Day incident. Yeah, there was like some beef going on between him and Harold Ramis. Oh yeah. That apparently Bill Murray patched things up with him before his death. I wow. don't, don't believe it, but uh, I mean, what were you saying? Yeah. Well, that's fascinating though. I had no I had no idea about that, but um, just like different, it's like Dan Aykroyd's is such a an established writer, and he's brilliant. It's not like he's a he's a dumb guy, you know. He's into quantum physics and and shit like that. Uh, there's a lot of interviews with him online where 
you watch those interviews and, uh, like, most people wouldn't know half the words in those interviews. He's so, like, you know, he loves to talk about quantum physics and matter and antimatter and, you know, right down to UFOs and ghosts and, uh, he really, you can tell, like, with Ghostbusters, he really did homework on it. You know, ectoplasmum, uh, you know, particle reaction, uh, Definitely particle reaction, like if you look at what's going on with CERN, with a particle accelerator, that's what Ghostbusters 3 was going to be about. You get a little bit of it in the video game, where they go into different dimensions. Uh, kind of like uh, that episode from the real Ghostbusters with the Boogeyman. Uh-huh. And that falls into it too, because originally, if you look back in, in uh, Sasquatch folklore, all the Southerners, that's where... Bookie Man originated from. And then you get like those, I would say, out of the box Sasquatch people who believe that they're tied up with, you know, spirits and, and UFOs, which I, I don't know. I don't know, like, I'm not with those people, but. <laughs> 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 like, um. That's all stuff Dan Aykroyd has, uh. has studied. He talks about that stuff all the time. Um, I just, I just find that we got kind of screwed on, on that. That they took such a great idea. Such a great, 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 great idea for a movie. And they threw it out the window. Everyone signed off for it, they threw it out the window. Then Harold dies. And then they say, okay, female Ghostbusters. And I don't have anything about the females. I think they're great. But, uh... If they were going to pass the torch to the next generation, they should have had the Ghostbusters pass the torch to the next generation. They shouldn't have, you know, the whole thing rebooted and started out of nowhere and changed the whole concept. Because, like we said last time, it's that formula of having, you know, Harold and Bill and Dan together. That's what makes it Ghostbusters. Yeah, not, I mean, not these... Uh, I mean, I just think the Ghostbusters reboot is, it's, it gives me a headache because I think Ghostbusters 3, it's a sequel that should have been done back in the 90s. Yeah. And I know Dan Aykroyd on so, so many occasions pined for passing the torch and passing the torch and passing the torch. And yes, I, you know, I got tired of Dan Aykroyd listening to him for a while because that's what it was all about. It became about that, and it pissed me off because I, I didn't want to see this happen. I didn't want to see them pass the torch. You know, mm-hmm. selfishly, I love the Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. You know, the four original guys. And to me, like I said before, I think Ghostbusters died with Howard Ramis. Um, and they just, they waited too long. Bill Murray, you know, he was always, you know, you didn't know if you wanted to be in it. Just always, what's the word looking for? Just, you know, just being a prick, I guess. Yeah. Too busy being a prick, and um, I'm surprised he didn't throw Melissa McCarthy's PKE meter off the fucking roof. Should have. Go fetch. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, the Ghostbusters reboot just—it looks like it's gonna suck. Yeah. And fuck Sony Pictures. Yeah. You know, oh, we're gonna. Uh, you probably heard about that too, but oh, we're going to delete any critical comments. Yeah. You know what? You got to learn how to take shit. Yeah, because they can dish out opinions, but they can't take opinions. Yeah, they want to say, well, this movie's going to happen. doesn't matter what you say, and oh, you just. Li- eh, just fuck it. Fuck selling pictures. Yeah. 